Hey guys, Paul here with Patek. In this video, I'm going to do something completely different. Normally, I'm doing uh, photography related camera bag reviews, digital tech videos, that kind of thing. Um, my hobby is fabrication, woodworking, puttering around in my garage, you know, to reduce uh, stress so I'm not choking the living daylights out of some <laughs> somebody in my business life. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool because I moved into this house about a year ago and it's a work in progress for sure. I mean, I've changed this garage so much since I first came in and I thought I'd share with you uh, some of the things that have really been game changers for me um, as far as making your space efficient. And you know, little things like, so this is Grex uh, Brad Nailer. Why you would want to buy this over this hunk of junk which caused, you know, basically I paid 50 bucks for and caused me all kinds of aggravation. And finally I smartened up and, and bought this one. But, um, so that's the kind of thing we're going to look at. Everything from, you know, tools that are going to be beneficial, the workbench, uh, storage overhead, lighting, you name it. And, and if you want information about the camera and rig I'm using, I'm going to certainly help you out in that regard. Uh, it's an A7 III, by the way, with a 24 millimeter G Master. But the crux of the video is going to be, I'm going to give you as many tips and tricks as I can, and I hope you'll share in return. I mean, don't he uh, hesitate to connect in, and we can uh, both learn together. So uh, let's jump in, and I'll share the, the first few tips with you, and we'll go from there. So tip number one is, let's talk about the workbench here. Um, what you need to know about the workbench, I think, is that the size of it is three feet by five feet. And that is absolutely perfect for a one car garage workshop. And the reason it's perfect is because it gives you space here, like you have to have an adequate walkway space and you've got three feet down here, um, you've got two or three feet over here, so you can walk around the workbench uh, fairly easily. And integrated into this workbench um, at this end, and this is version one of my workbench. I already have plans made to do version two. I have a shop vac in here. You can see the hose coming out here. It goes into the back of the table saw. Um, so the size of the workbench is 35 inches high. It's three feet by five, in, uh, five feet long, and it has been absolutely perfect. Um, I highly recommend that you go with this size. It supports a four by eight sheet of plywood. Uh, you can do all the cutting that you want to do. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Now I will show you the one uh, mistake I made in building this workbench. So this is the mistake I made in building my tool bench, and that is this flip top lid that I put on the tool bench. This is with a, without a doubt the biggest mistake. Do not do this. Um, what you'll find is that every time you want something under the lid, you've got 15 different things on top, wood, projects, whatever, and you know you gotta clean the whole thing off to lift up the thing and try and get what's inside. This was a huge mistake, waste of time, don't do it. Um, I highly recommend that you do not do this. I watched some YouTube video and I saw some guy making two or three of these benches and they were, she was sliding them under another bench. And I mean, I guess for him it worked out, but for me, I found it's a total disaster. So this is the one thing that you don't wanna do. Tip number two relates to your upper shelving. So what you're looking at here is I've got two sections of shelving. Uh, they're both eight feet long. So from on this side here, from here, to here is eight feet and in the corner from the wall over to the end here is eight feet long. And the mistake I made in my previous shop was that I made these shelves uh, coming out four feet from the wall. So they were quite deep. And the problem with that is that you can't access, it's easy to put things up, um, but when you go to get them back, it's very difficult to um, get easy access to them and get them off of the shelf. So uh, another benefit of two feet by eight feet is that you can simply take a sheet of OSB, half inch OSB and cut it in half. So it's, it's better for storage. It's, it's easier to access. It's more cost effective. Um, like I said uh, earlier, this, this shelving is gonna be, it's basically a work in progress. And my goal is to have this type of shelving around the entire perimeter of the garage when I'm done. And you can see how handy it is. Like I don't have to get up on a ladder to grab this aluminum 
um, scaffolding. It's kind of a medium scaffolding thing. Um, I don't have to get on a ladder to grab any of these bit, you know, my crosscut sled, this little dolly thing here. Um, here's the insulation that I used for insulating the far wall. And then this is just a junk storage. So I'm in the process of anything that I'm not using is going to be going out in the garbage. And that's what this shelving is really excels at. Um, it just gives you storage for lesser used items and gets them up out of the way so you've got more room on the floor uh, to work and the other thing if you notice here in the corner you see the wiring run through so this type of shelving provides an excellent framework to run your wiring for lighting or uh, receptacles junction boxes uh, whatever you have so in this image here uh, which is a montage of the table saw you can see how I basically solved a problem I had probably a month ago I've had it for a long time but um, it was just th this frame and, and set of wheels that the table saw was riding on was great if you're a contractor and you're taking your table saw from your pickup truck to the job site on a regular basis. And it worked good for me for a while in the garage, but I just found that um, in these images here, if you look down the right hand side, you can see how much this thing was sticking out on the right hand side. You can see how much uh, it was sticking out on the left hand side. And there's only a provision to take this bar off the top of the frame. And on this side, you're pretty limited. So um, here's a look at the solution I came up with. I built a platform on the end of my workbench and just uh, gave it a couple of supports going to the bottom. And it is unbelievable how much uh, space this frees up. I mean, it's it's completely open underneath. I can put one of these plastic bins. I'm, I'm planning to get a low profile plastic bin or I'll make something out of wood, but I wanna stick that underneath here for cutoffs. And it just frees up the whole area walking around the saw. So now if I move over to this image here, you can see that with the uh, rack over there by the garage door and everything's out of the way, it just completely frees up this area here. I've got more room around the back and I can come up here so there's no obstruction. So that was definitely a win-win move. And um, I would highly recommend that you consider something like this. And I mentioned in the, the first tip or in the beginning of the video that I have a shop back here and you can see the hose coming out. And the, the plan for version two of this workbench is that the shop vac will be moved to this end. And at this end here is going to be a router table with a lift built into the table. And I'll get rid of this stupid uh, tilt up uh, tabletop idea that I, <laughs> I had. This next tip uh, basically re revolves around this inexpensive Delta chop saw that I've got here. And <clears throat> I think for anyone that has used uh, a chop saw, you know how messy they are. And the dust was just driving me absolutely mad. So um, in typical uh, Paul's project fashion, instead of doing something out of half inch plywood, I always like to mock things up. And so that's the reason that this is all uh, done up in cardboard. It's actually the um, uh, DeWalt uh, shop vacuum box that uh, this shop vac came in. So as you can see, I've got an IVAC switch down here and um, I've got the shop vac underneath the table. And so this was all done fairly recently, like within the last three, four months or so, these tables, you know, I built this, these tables here and I've been moving things around and fine tuning uh, slowly uh, but surely. And this is a, a easy way to, you can do all your cutouts and everything and see, you know, what works the best. And this was the setup that I, I found works the best. This little flap here moves out of the way when you release the pin and the, the handle goes up. So this has turned out to be a real godsend. I mean, this knocks the dust uh, right down. And we'll be talking about dust collection a little bit later and the value of these. And you can see I've got this DeWalt uh, shop back here. I've got another one over here. So this one is just free roaming in the shop. If I need to suck something up, I can just grab this one. And then this one here is fixed. And uh, I'm going to show you a comparison between the DeWalt shop back and another model that I have and just talk a little bit about why these things uh, work really well. But um, yeah, if you don't want to expire prematurely, I highly recommend that you build some kind of a dust shroud for your chop saw um, to keep you healthy. So as time goes on, the idea will be, uh, I've got so many things on the go right now, I just don't have time, but I'll take this cardboard out and um, 
the one thing that I'm going to do, the height of it is a little bit high. I don't really need this uh, eight inches between this cutoff here and here. So I'm going to lower the top of this down a little bit, maybe in this area here. But this is the overall design. It seems to work really well. And it's primarily just for straight cuts, um, although I can. Um, modify this like the cardboard I can take these flaps out if I need to cut 45s which I do occasionally but primarily it's just 90 degree cuts and that solves the the majority of the problem that I had since I broached the topic of dust collection in the last uh, section I thought I would cover it here it made sense to to get right into it so primarily I use two vacuums um, shop vacs and I have two of these DeWalt uh, shop vacs which are 10 gallon 5 horsepower I have one of these this is a Mastercraft two and a half uh, horsepower four gallon and I have to be honest with you this Mastercraft thing wouldn't suck the skin off a of rice pudding to be quite honest with you um, and this DeWalt and I'll just say right up front this is not a paid review okay um, I bought two of these things because they're so damn good they're quiet uh, they've got you know tremendous suction you can do the wet dry thing you've got the drain on the bottom um, they slide around the shop real easily and they have this nice heavy duty t-handle on top you can rack you wrap your cords around you can grab the thing throw it into a truck and on the back side you can't see it uh, there's a little basket uh, where you can put all your tools so I found these uh, DeWalt vacuums to be very good and here's your pro tip of the day I've seen these at Lowe's uh, building centers for 200 bucks. I bought both of mine from Costco. I think they were between 89 and 99 dollars. And um, so you can save a lot of money if you pick these up at Costco. I think it's some deal they've made with Costco. But uh, anywho, if you're looking for a good quality shop vacs and you want ones that are quiet, um, this DeWalt uh, is a great option. This tip is going to be the bonus round. You're going to get about six tips in one. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, what you can see here is basically one, two, three pieces of two by four that I glued and screwed together to make this kind of a step shelf thing for all my little bits and pieces here. And this is one of the things that I've made that has been absolutely invaluable. And it, the whole thing just slides into this little shelf here. So I can take this thing out and take it over to the workbench if I need to. Uh, if I'm building a project and I want to have everything handy, I just grab this thing and away we go. Now, um, I'm going to go through some of these bits that, that have been um, absolutely invaluable. Um, this one up here, this little DeWalt right angle thing, is a, that's a lifesaver. Just go out and get one. They're like 28 bucks at Home Depot. Um, it's been a huge help for sure. But um, let's take a close look at some other things that I use on a daily basis. So first of all, this Lufkin Shop 4 16 foot tape measure. You wouldn't uh, normally pay that much attention to tape measures, but I'm 62 years old and I find it hard to see things uh, these days. So, um, and I just find that this Lufkin tape measure is so easy to work with. It has this huge uh, cleat on the end of it. It grabs things better than any other tape measure that I've used. It's easy to see. It has the numbering on both sides of the tape and it's this black and green color. So it, it just makes it, if you're in a low light situation, this thing shows up thoroughly well. Another uh, thing that has been an absolute game changer and again, I'm not sponsored. You see a lot of stuff here by DeWalt. It just happens to be their brand of, that's what has worked for me. Um, these little um, DeWalt bits, in this case, this one here and this one here, is two versions of the same thing. This one came in a kit that I bought, but these little magnetized ends that they have, so this ring here has a magnet on the end of it. Oh my God, it just saves you from dropping screws on the floor all over the place. Um, so either this version here or this one one here, whichever one you get there, they just they'll change your life. Trust me, just go out and get a couple of them for sure. Um, the other bits that I've got here, these are just three. I think these are four inch models. So I, I typically tend to use the six inch ones or these ones here if I need to get um, a little bit more force on or if I'm working in a confined space. But these have turned out to be um, probably my go to bits uh, when I'm working with my impact drivers. And this little gizmo over here, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it in the description for you. If you look here, what this thing does is you put it on the end of your impact driver or your drill and you can drill 
countersinks so you can drill your pilot hole and your countersink at the same time and what happens is this thing here spins around freely and as as you're pressing down uh, once it stops spinning you know that you've got the right depth uh, countersink so um, I you know again I think this was about 25 bucks and I'll put that in the description as well just go out and get one of them for sure because you'll be so glad you did it just saves you so much trouble everything in woodworking is you know countersinking screws and wood screws and that kind of thing so um, I highly recommend so here's one two three four you know four different things that uh, they'll just change your life so by all means go out and get them so it looks like in this one you're getting another bonus round because here's three things that have worked uh, exceptionally well for me first of all these little racks here for my screwdrivers and pliers and stuff to keep everything handy have been an absolute godsend <clears throat> then these next um, you know storage containers for nuts and bolts and screws and I've decided to, to label everything to make it a little bit more efficient but um, these have worked out exceptionally well and I could probably use two more of them and I you know I picked them up I think I got these things from Princess Auto but I'm sure Harbor Freight um, would have something um, you know even Home Depot or Lowe's you, you can probably buy these containers and then up the top here a lot of times when I buy screws I'll just keep them in the containers they come in but um, I also use old peanut butter jars and I, I know a lot of people do this kind of thing um, um, these have been okay the peanut butter jars work fine the plastic jars because you can see everything but um, these um, proper storage rack things are just you know ten times better so you know there's three things right there that will um, make your life a lot more efficient so, you know keep you from wasting a lot of time so in this shot here, um, you can really see the lighting that I have in my shop. And um, I've used these flat panel Arteca lights that I've got from uh, Costco. And what you need to know about lighting, if you want to see things a little better than you currently do, is that lighting is measured in degrees Kelvin. And as a photographer, you know, in photography we know that um, daylight balanced lighting is going to give you a nice bright white it's the closest thing to you know standing outside uh, kind of lighting so anything from 5,000 to about 6,000 degrees Kelvin is considered daylight balanced lighting 5,500 I think most professionals would agree is the de facto standard so 5,500 degrees Kelvin and you're all set you're going to get a much nicer light and the, these light panels are daylight balanced light and I've got uh, two of them on the ceiling one here uh, one a little further back out of sight you can't see and then I <clears throat> excuse me I've got one here one here and I have a third one that I'm going to put up when I extend this shelf down towards the doors um, but I can't um, recommend these lights enough and if you decide you know these don't quite fit you can buy LED uh, pot lights now that are exactly the same um, they're, they're a lot you know like four inches in diameter so th there's a lot of um, options you have these days for lighting but the key is to get daylight balanced lighting um, it'll give you a better quality light and less glare just make your life uh, a heck of a lot easier so I've zoomed in a little bit here so you can get a better idea of the quality of light that you're getting and um, let's switch to this shot here so these are the light panel they're called skylights uh, they're made by Arteca and I purchased them at Costco I think they're about 65 bucks a panel um, uh, for my use I can't recommend them enough um, and they're easy to install you you hook them up to 110 120 volts and um, yeah just go out and get them if you're you're looking for some lighting for your garage workshop um, I would highly recommend these so for tip number nine here um, I think this one can be applied to a lot of things in life but um, on the left hand side we've got a Grex Brad Nailer on the right hand side I've got an inexpensive power fist uh, Brad Nailer and you know I think I paid 50 bucks for this this thing here when I first started woodworking and then about three months ago I bought this Grex and there's a huge difference in price this one was 250 bucks this one was 50 or 60 dollars and but I never realized how bad this one was the power fist one was until I started using the Grex and oh my god I mean you know um, the mechanism at the where the nail actually comes out is so much nicer to use the the biggest difference is that you can you can fine-tune where your nails go you're not doing uh, so many misfires I mean I'm probably doing 50% less misfires using the Grex 
um, and it just has a lot of handy little options on it um, that are extremely beneficial even something simple as this little hook here if you want to hang this on your belt um, it comes with the actual air fitting that goes in here it actually has a swivel uh, on it and it bends down but it wasn't the right type I needed for my machine but I, I those you can buy um, almost anywhere but um, if you're looking for a really good brad nailer I would highly recommend this Grex so that's a little better you, you can see here the model is uh, 1850 GB so if you're looking for a good brad nailer um, this one I think you'll you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of I certainly have I'm a lot less frustrated now um, everything on this brad nailer works exceptionally well and I like the color <laughs> for my last tip uh, tip number 10 in this video uh, I thought I would share with you this is the Rockler I'm pretty sure it's Rockler I'll put the links in the description for you um, but this is a vacuum hose adapter system and it's designed because of you know um, every tool you have has a different exhaust port on it and so this little kit from Rockler it has these flexible rubber fittings on the ends and you can shove it over the uh, exhaust port of just about any tool um, it also you can see the end here you can thread it into the pipe um, there's lots of flexibility so they give you two different sizes here for different uh, tools and then the end of it here on this end it actually matches up with most shop vacuums which is I think it's about a two inch uh, adapter but I found this uh, kit to be uh, really useful um, you know you, you go and buy something and sometimes they work sometimes they don't well this kit uh, works exceptionally well so I'd highly recommend this as well okay guys so that's gonna wrap it up for my first <laughs> It never fails when you're shooting video, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap things up here for my first uh, Paul's Projects video. And the idea behind this video was to put together uh, 10 tips that I wish I had known when I first started uh, working out in the garage doing woodworking and fabrication. And when I say fabrication, I mean, I do everything from woodworking, I make, um, tripod hanging racks. Uh, I'm going to be making a camera stand in the not too distant future. So so woodworking, metalworking, you name it, a little bit of electrical, um, all that kind of stuff. So what I want to know from you guys is, do, did you find this video useful? I mean, I wish I had known these 10 things when I first got started. So I, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, give me a subscribe and a like and hit the notification button if you did. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.